What I'd really like to say is what I've been hearing today is music to my ears. Is it is so good to hear this. I'm I'm one of the original signatories of the Quatre Premier, the Four for One Thousand in Paris, when I was the president of iPhone Organics International, and at that time I believed it was one of, it's probably one of the most important things to come out of Paris, and the truth is I believe now it is amongst the most important things because this year. In Manalao and Hawaii, we reached a new record of 417 parts per million of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And the, the last time we had, well, we didn't even have 400 parts per million. The last time we can go back when we had 380 parts per million was between three and three and a half million years ago. And the research done, and there's some very good peer-reviewed papers in the journal Nature, shows that the temperatures were between 5 to 16 degrees warmer, and sea levels were between 20 to 30 metres higher than they are now. And where, where this is really important, because even if the world transitioned to 100% renewable energy tomorrow, this will not stop the temperature and sea level rises. The world will continue to heat up because it'll take more than 100 years for the CO2 levels to drop naturally. The United Nations Paris Agreement proposes to have net CO2 neutrality by 2050. And all the evidence shows this will be too late to stop the enormous damage of catastrophic climate change. At the current rate of, of emissions, we will be close to 500 parts per million in the atmosphere before we reach net neutrality. The fact is, we are in a serious climate emergency now. You know, we have to speed up the transitions to renewable energy. We have to stop the clearing of all forests and we also have to make a great effort to draw the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and try and get it back to the 280 parts per million that we had in the pre-industrial era. And as we know, soils are the greatest sink for carbon after the oceans. We already have too much carbon in the oceans, too much carbon dioxide, we're acidifying it, we're causing massive problems where I live in Northern Australia, the acidity is affecting the Great Barrier Reef, but it's affecting ecosystems throughout, throughout the, our, our oceans. We have too much in the atmosphere, but the soils hold around 2,700 gigatons of carbon dioxide. And that's almost three times the amount of what we have in the atmosphere and all the biomass on the planet. It's the logical place for us to put the carbon. What we know now, and we've heard a lot today, that, that um, we have a lot of agricultural systems that are, that are losing soil carbon that's going up into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. In fact, it's estimated we have lost between 50 to 70 percent of the original soil carbon pool. And this is um, being further um, exacerbated by degradation and desert desertification. However, I think the, the other thing that's coming out of today is the good news. And it's the good news we need to work on. We know that we have agricultural systems that recycle organic matter, use crop rotations that can increase the levels of soil organic carbon. And this can be achieved through a number, quite a number of techniques, such as longer rotations, uh, ground covers, cover crops, green manures, legumes, compost, organic mulches, biochar, perennial systems, agroforest, agroecology, biodiversity, and a whole range of livestock systems on pastures and rangelands 
that use sustainable grazing systems such as holistic grazing. And all of these systems now are starting to come under the heading of regenerative agriculture because they can regenerate soil organic carbon. And this is really important because we, we have to shift agriculture, agricultural systems, so that they mitigate greenhouse gases to stop catastrophic climate change. And agriculture has to move from being a major problem, one of the major causes of greenhouse gases, and we can change it now to being a major solution. Thank you. Thank you.